Why hello again everybody and welcome to my life. This is once again the deputy of Movie Deputy Podcasts bringing you unique and introspective reviews that truly interrogate a movie for the plot and content, bringing you the information that you need to know to make the most informed decision on whether or not you or your family are going to want to see this movie. So I hope that I can definitely be a key part in helping make those decisions by kind of helping bring some of the information to you that honestly Hollywood's not going to give you and I mean to be honest half the time the previews they're either all the good scenes that are in the movie or they are completely misleading that's very rarely do you, you watch it like a or, okay for me if I watch a preview and I'm like oh my god that looks like it's gonna be such an amazing movie and then I get to see the movie and I'm like okay or I'm like okay everything was good the in the movie was in the preview or I watch it and I'm like did they even know what movie they were making the preview about so it's kind of a mixed bag on this one and honestly that can truly be said for the movie we're going to be talking about today we're actually going to be talking about the new animated flick Ruby Gilman Teenage Kraken now I'd seen all the previews and everything for this and so I honestly wasn't sure what to expect. I was also checking out some of the poster art and some of the information on it prior to watching it and I was not prepared for the type of story that it was leading into. Now before I get too much into the story I am going to, don't worry, you know me, no spoilers, you don't gotta worry about that. But let me just say that the creators of this definitely took some jabs at some Disney movies, including one of the more recent ones. They definitely had fun making fun of Little Mermaid with this one and doing so in, <laughs> in a way that they they not only dance around it, I mean, they jump full in, I mean, like full on knockout with some of the jokes in this one, some of the references. And there's also some references to another Disney movie that was a year or maybe two ago, Turning Red. There were some references even to that movie on this one and so if you were a fan of those great if not great too because this one truly goes above and beyond making fun of that this i described a little bit in the just the description i put under here that this is the ultimate teenage angst movie it <laughs> it is full teenage attitude throughout now mind you it could have done without all of the woke stuff that they put in it. I mean, it talks about being offended and all of this kind of fun, just kind of crappy stuff that we don't need in today's society. Just it kind of goes into being triggered and there are some gay characters and some emo characters and okay, mind you, there, there needs to be representation of some of that. I'm referring to like the email stuff. It's like Okay, as a Gen Xer, I went through a little bit of an emo phase myself. I think a lot of kids experiment and stuff with that just through short phases, but we don't need all the rest of the woke crap that's in these stories today, and especially when it's shoved so far down our throats and it's just it's like, why? <laughs> and yes, that was over exaggerated intentionally. And then there's just some comments made throughout the story referring, to, okay. I, for one, back in the day, thought of prom as like a rite of passage. Okay, some of the timeline in this movie doesn't necessarily make sense because they're talking about junior prom in this movie and at the same time they're talking about it being like the last celebration before they go off into adulthood. So I don't know if these people forgot that you have to be a senior after being a junior to graduate or if that was just an intentional omission just to try to make a joke that I don't think anybody got. I'm not sure, but they also refer to prom throughout the movie as a post-colonial patriarchal concept. And they also are, there's other types of quotes and I'm trying to think of some of the other big words that they used in this one. It was just, like I said, it's the ultimate teenage angst movie. If you are, if you're a teenager of feel like you don't fit in and you're just my parents don't listen to me they don't understand me they don't understand my life then you're probably gonna love this movie <laughs> if you are a parent of a teenager like that you might get something out of this movie but that's only if you like I said if you could overlook all the rest of the woke crap that's involved in it I mean 
that alone just kind of kills it for me a little bit. Personally, I would, on the deputy scale, I want to give it a three. Just, that's a personal rating. That, that's, um, that's not what I'm actually giving it. In reality, I'm giving it a five and a half. I, because personally, I want to give it a three. Three is, if you must see it, wait for it to come out on DVD, Blu-ray, instant video, etc. With a five, it's just saying, eh, it's watchable, but it's just got a very narrow audience. Some of the stuff that it talks about is more meaningful than other things. One of the quotes that the, that Aggie says to her daughter Ruby in the movie, and I felt like this applies to a lot of families, and yes, I am getting somewhere with all of this, so just bear with me. But Aggie says to Ruby, I fight for my family. I fight for who I love. You just want to fight. Now, anybody who's ever raised a teenager or ever been involved in like their nieces or nephews' lives get that statement. It's like, because we're sitting there trying to fight for our families. We're trying to make things right. As teenagers, they go through a, a phrase, phase, I can't talk, a phase where all they want to do is fight. It's like every little thing is an argument. And you're like, what is going on? I don't even know this person. But ultimately, they're just testing the boundaries. They, for, for all the parents out there, and aunts and uncles or grandparents or whoever you are raising your children or your friend's children or your nieces or your nephews or whoever, they are testing the boundaries. They still want boundaries. They still want to know that you care. Now, mind you, that's not to say don't have an iron fist and don't like make them feel like they can't escape. I mean, they have to be able to express their creativity too, but sometimes with some of that argumentativeness, and I don't even know that's a word, but some of that, they're just trying to test and see how far they can push you and see how far you'll keep pushing back to show them how much you love them. I know that made no sense. <laughs> it made sense in my brain, at least before I said it, but I mean, my kids, uh, I've got a bi biological child and multiple, I was the neighborhood mom growing up, a lot of times these kids at my house would behave better because I I pushed back when they pushed. I didn't just give in. To this day, I've got a great relationship with a lot of these kids. I mean, they're almost 30 years old now. It's, that It just says a lot. So I'm just saying, if you're going through this difficult time with your kid, don't give up. If your kids go to see this movie and say, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. <sighs> Like I said, don't give up on them. It does get better. It really does. I promise. But getting back to the movie, this one, basically Ruby is a kraken and she lives on land with her mom and her dad and her little brother. And she's been told never, ever, 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 never go near the water. Now, mind you, they live in Oceanside, California. So if the mom is wanting her daughter to never, never, ever go in the water, well, why do they live in Oceanside? I mean, even the junior prom is being held on a boat, and Ruby really wants to go to the prom. And her mom's like, no, you can't go because it's out on the water. <laughs> Something kind of happens when Ruby's love interest ends up falling in the water, and she jumps in to save him. And when she jumps in, she notices something starting to change. She starts turning into a giant kraken. Now, Krakens were long thought of to be sea monsters. Throughout this, Ruby discovers that not only is she not a sea monster, she is royalty. It was just her mom escaped the whole overbearingness of the grandmother many years ago and tried to protect Ruby from all of this here on land. And then, of course, there's a pirate out there that's trying to catch the Kraken and make a big whole thing out of it. And that's kind of a side story that's entertaining to watch along the way. It, it's just kind of how this plays out of how this Kraken tries to live on land. And then so another sea creature ends up befriending Ruby in school as this beautiful new redhead student who is also happens to be a mermaid. Uh, ring any bells as to what I was referencing before? But it kind of plays out that this new mermaid is just using Ruby and kind of how that... I, I, can't really say the details on that because that would be spoilers and you know me. But there's a line that kind of catches it in the movie. It says, you can't outswim your destiny. <laughs> there's a lot of near swears in this one that they're entertaining, but for families who are sensitive to that, that may be carrying it a bit too far. Like there's, I'm a mother flippin' mermaid, and you can know the reference on that. 
th there's a few other ones too that are along the way. Like I said, ultimately, I would personally give it a much lower rating, but Deputy Wise, looking at the story, looking at the targeted audience, looking at the wokeness and stuff that's kind of being shoved down your throats a little bit, ultimately, there, there is a bigger story here that has a lot of heart to it. It, it does manage to tell a really heartwarming story amidst all of the chaos, but it's just really hard to sit through the rest of it to get there. <laughs> when I first came home and my husband was asking me, he goes, so what do you think of it? My first reaction was literally, eh. That was literally my reaction. I just went, eh. Because I didn't know really how else to describe it. And initially, honestly, that was my reaction. But upon thinking about it more and looking back over some of my notes, there really was a story here to be told. And like I said, they had a lot of fun making fun of the Disney movies in this. And... <laughs> The whole thing of turning into the giant animal and kind of how that relates and what family means and just kind of that whole thing. Like I said, there's references to both Turning Red and The Little Mermaid in this one. It's all making fun of them. So <laughs> if you've loved those Disney movies, you might not appreciate those jokes. But if you dislike those movies as much as I personally did, then you will appreciate the jokes that are made uh, on behalf of this one. So whether or not Ruby Gilman Teenage Kraken is for you is completely up to you to decide. To decide if it helps if I can talk tonight. I apologize. But I hope this will help you make up your mind on this one. I am going to go ahead and give this a guilty rating on the, the movie deputy scale on that. I just, with some of the references, I don't know if it would be completely against anybody like under the age of 12 viewing it. It says, heck, a lot of kids probably wouldn't get the jokes, but I feel it would honestly be safe for, thir for 13 and above. So if you're looking for something along those lines, like I said, this is going to get a guilty rating on the movie deputy scale on that. And again, I'm giving it a score of a 5.5. I've actually given quite a few children's movies in that same ranking just because they're not... These movies aren't meant for everybody. They've got a narrow tar targeted audience and this one is definitely aimed at those awkward teenage years. So whether or not you want to let your kids see it is up to you and whether or not you want to experience it for yourself. As always, I like to mention if there's any in memoriams or anything like that in the movie. And at the end of the credits, it did say in memory of Nick Levendusky. Again, I apologize if I mispronounced the name. But if they felt important enough to put it in the credits, I wanted to be sure to mention it. I hope that helps, and I hope that you have a great day. I'm looking forward to bringing more movie information to you in the future. As always, if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye, everybody!